Hey there everyone, Hatayish here and welcome to another video of the Golang series. Now the goal is really simple. I hope you have watched the previous video. In case not, just go ahead watch previous one. This video is not going to make you any sense if the previous video is not clear. So basically I've given you all the exercise files. You can create your server up and running. You can also install this Thunder Client server and make a web request onto the URL, localhost colon 8000 or 3000 or 5000, whatever you got, and slash get. We make a get request, send this one, and we receive this data, hello from Learn Code Online. We want to receive this data. Now here is the goal and here's the strategy we are going to follow. We are going to create three separate videos. The first one is going to handle the get request onto our server. The second one is going to handle the post request, but the data this time is going to be sended up in the JSON format. And in the third video, we are going to create the same uh, post form request, but this time instead of JSON, we'll be using the encoded URL form. So basically three major ways of how we send data to any web server. That's exactly what we are gonna do. So let's go ahead and work through with that one by one, this video, all for get. And I'll show you something a uh, really not so easy way of handling the string as well. Surely you have to use or not, that's up to you. But I'll still show you that uh, you're going to see this quite a lot in the other code files. So first, let's go ahead and say that we are going to create a package inside the package or after the package, we are going to have a simple main method. Fumped is really, really important one here. So we're going to say that welcome to uh, let's say web verb video and let's go ahead and call this one LCO. So that is nice and easy. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to create separate methods so that we can play around them a little bit. Uh, let's call this one as perform get request and feel free to use the first P as uppercase or lowercase based on do you want to make it public or not. Now after that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a simple my URL. Let's call it as my URL. And that one will be going to, and make sure you don't make a mistake on this URL. We need exactly this URL. Uh, otherwise, maybe there's a typo here and just like there, we got a typo, there's two edge. Sometimes these are, these are negligent and you won't be running anything. So make sure you watch it out very carefully, calmly write this one and make sure you get this one. Now there are a couple of uh, questions that can come up here at this point that why we are declaring this uh, constant up here. We can actually take parameter while designing this function. You are absolutely correct. Consider this as an exercise that instead of creating a method like this and having a constant, just create this meta method in such a way that it expects a parameter and you just handle it there. Nice and easy, string format of course. Okay, once this is all done, we have seen that how we can make a web request. It's pretty simple. We have already done that. We use HTTP and we can use a dot get method and pass on my URL on that. Now, obviously this may give you a response or may give you an error. Let's save this one. Obviously the expected libraries are being imported. Come on, stay here. And there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and use the syntax. If the error is not nil, that means there is something inside the error then obviously it's a time to panic. So let's panic out and error this out. Okay, nice and easy. If the response is good, then obviously we know how to deal up with the response. But before you do that, make sure you don't forget that it is your job to close the request as well. So let's go ahead and defer that. So we're going to go ahead and defer this request to close it out. So we're going to say response, response dot body.close. So whenever all things are done, it's going to just close it and will do its job. So let's not forget that. Okay. Maybe there are a couple of things you want to additionally do instead of just panicking out on error. Maybe you want to go ahead and find out uh, what is the status code of this request. So probably you want to do that. So we're going to go ahead and say that inside the response, you have a status. Come on, this is too bad response there we go why is it doing this badly <laughs> i'm gonna write that response dot status now it's not gonna give me suggestion really bad uh, we can go ahead and say that this is going to give me a status code so come on let me save this and hopefully am i making a typo come on don't do this to me okay so hopefully this is all good and this is making problem. It says missing a comma. Ah, that is fine. I get that. Okay, so we are able to get a status code. Probably we want to do some if and else statement based on if the status code is not 200 or if it is 400, 500 or something. 
Also, sometimes it is important that we want to grab the content length as well. In some cases, it is very, very crucial to have the content length as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to go ahead and say response dot content length. Okay, so there we go. All the content length and the basic FL stuff is all done with us. Now we have seen that in case we want to read this response of the body, all we have to do is take help of IO util and we use read all and inside this read all we pass on the response dot body. It might give you a content that you can print out or might give you an error. In this case, I'm not too much worried on that. Probably you can improve this code and be worried about the error in this case. And we have seen that in the pumped.print line, we can go ahead and say that, uh, you know what, I'm gonna just print this out. So you just go ahead, wrap it around into the string and say that, hey, print my content. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, open this up and say go run main.go and we see nothing because we forgot to call this method. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and say perform get request, save this next time and there we go so now we can see that the status code is 200 the content length is 43 and the message which is of course in the string format is now having the message and hello from the learn code online.in now yes i do agree i haven't taught you yet that how to handle the json uh, format of the data we have that under the under consideration it will come up uh, right now let's have one thing at a time one challenge at a time so this is all basics we want to do, but there is another way of handling this entire fiasco. I would like you to stick around because this is going to be a little bit tricky, but it's worth it. So instead of having this managed like this, you can actually use this strings package. Remember string is a data type, strings is a package. And if you scroll a little bit, you're going to see that they give you like gazillion amount of thing to split, lowercase, uppercase, and a whole bunch of other things. Interestingly, it also gives you this builder. You can create a builder and builders is used to efficiently build a string using the right method. So there is a method inside this, which is right. And you can actually go ahead and create a string based on that. What's wrong in the way how we have created the string? Nothing, but sometimes people write things in a different way. And if you're going to see that Golang code, you'll be just stuck around. I don't want you to do that. I want you to understand every bit piece of code. Now this is inevitable line. IO utils need to read the response from the body. Now it is in the content. Content is in the byte format. Remember we, uh, we discussed this earlier as well, that if I go ahead and say pumped and I just go ahead and say content, we have already seen and witnessed this kind of thing that this is all in the byte format. We need somebody who can actually translate uh, this entire bytes to us. So that's what exactly things are going on. If you do it this way, fine. But if you do it a little bit different, so let's go ahead and comment this out and comment this out. Maybe you don't want to do it this way. Then obviously the first thing we have to do is create a builder for that. So we're gonna go ahead and say, this is my res, I forgot an S response string and that will be coming up from string not string strings dot builder remember it said you can use strings dot builder but it has also a write method that you can use so how we're going to do that the content i told you it's always going to be coming up somehow the data in the bytes or any format needs to be there so we have this one so what we can do further is we can actually go ahead and say there will be a byte count maybe you want to print it for some reason i don't know why but maybe you want to print it so this is going to be done by this response string that we have just created remember it has a method of dot write and here you can pass on all the content so whenever you have data in the bytes you can go ahead and use this exact syntax to actually have this one but interestingly now you have this uh, byte count so do you want to print this byte count Yes, I want to see what's inside that because that's interesting. Let's go ahead and say, oh, come on, byte count is, and we are gonna go ahead and say byte count. And, but this doesn't solve my problem. This doesn't yet print my response because hey, everything is fine and easy. Nobody is giving me error if I run this. Uh, okay, it gives me a byte count of 43, which is exactly same as content length, but where is my data? Where is my response? I want to see that response. In case you want to see that response, not in case you obviously want to see that response, your response is still inside this response string. Just like it has a method of dot write, it has a method to 
just throw away this data as well and you'll be surprised to know how easy it is all you got to do is simply say response string and dot string it will convert whatever the data it is holding inside it will convert into a format of string and that's why some people like this method because you are holding this raw data all the time with you so this dot write means i'm accepting this byte count as a data you want to have it into a string format or maybe some another format it is much easier in this format so you get the idea and the intention behind that of course i need to prove myself just like always by having a print message so this is all it is now again, uh, which one is correct, which one is not correct? Obviously, beginners will see that this is more better way because we just wrap it around a string and it works. Uh, yes, I do agree in some cases. In some cases, I would prefer this way because it uses a library which is much more powerful. All I have to do is just write one extra line, which is dot write. And then I have this byte count and I can, uh, not byte count, this response string, which I can throw up in a lot of ways. And in case you want to know about that, uh, you can go ahead and say response string and just put up a dot and notice here how much control I get into a print, uh, write string, write rune or rune, however you say that, uh, write bytes, string, reset, length, grow. I have a little bit more capabilities. Again, depends on your use case scenario. For the future videos, I will definitely go for the shortcut of this one because I've already covered this one, so won't be covering it further down. Okay, quite a lot of stuff. That's it for this video. Hope you have enjoyed it. In case you have enjoyed it, Please, please let me know in the comment section. A hi on Instagram would be pretty cool. But again, no, no pressure. Let's catch up in the next video.